welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. In remembrance of the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, all this week, Andrew interviews Marjorie Dannenfelser, a courageous political ally in the fight for life. A little over 2,000 children die every day. In this hour, 105 children have died. Wow. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. And this week, we have a uh, set of very, very special programs. Some of you may know, but this is the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision that was made in uh, 1973, I believe it was. And so every year around this time, we do something just to emphasize what the Bible has to say about this. There, it's so many people that don't know, and I'm, I'm appalled at how many Christians don't know what the Bible says about abortion. And so during this time, we have interviewed people who have survived abortions. We've had two women on here who actually have been aborted and survived. We've had a woman on here whose daughter went for an abortion, didn't tell anybody what she was doing, and she died in the process. And the woman was able to go to the uh, courts and get the doctor put in prison for malpractice and the things that he did. But anyway, it is not a simple issue. And I tell you, Christians need to be informed about this. So we're dedicating this week's broadcast to the anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision. And I am really, really blessed to have Marjorie <laughs> Dannenfelser. Well said. I'm, I tell you, I've <laughs> struggled with that, but I think I finally got it. I used to be Jones, so <laughs> a lot of love made that change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Marjorie is a blessing. We, we did a, a program on our truth and liberty with her and with also Karen Conrad and Richard Harris. And I tell you, it was powerful. It was really, really good. So Marjorie, uh, I'm not sure that I could give a total resume on you. <laughs> I know that, you know, all of us are important, but God has mm -hmm. been using you in some special ways. And you have become like what? the pre uh, What were you saying? The presidents of... Uh, Oh, He's I was appointed the, you to the um, I'm, I'm the chairman of the president's um, pro-life coalition in the battleground states where he won. And, and I look forward to doing that again in 2020. So uh, Marjorie started the Susan B. Anthony list, mm -hmm. which is one of the premier pro-life uh, advocacy groups in the United States. And uh, I think you were saying, what, 600? Uh, 600,000 members. Um, we're in every battleground state that you can find when it comes to an election. We've helped elect 20 senators, a president of the United States. By the grace of God, we've gone from defense on this issue to offense. Amen. And you've been <laughs> at this for how many years? Well, I'm not going to admit that because I'm only 25, <laughs> but I have been doing it for 25 years. Uh, so. Only 25? Yeah. Then you started young, didn't you? <laughs> well, I tried, yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. And when yeah. you say that you've helped elect uh, officials, this isn't just through like publicity or stuff. You've got boots on the ground that are actually out knocking on the doors. That's right. You know, we really saw through a couple of decades of trying to really get involved in the pro-life battle and in elections and really make a difference that what the left had done beautifully and personally was get involved voter to voter, have those conversations. And when we got big enough that we had the scale to do it, we moved into states and recruited the best people in states to go door to door. They tend to be young um, or sometimes retired that they and so in these um, in these past elections in the Senate all those Senate races that were really up for grabs all of our canvassers went um, door to door over two million homes they visited wow. and I want to tell you um, that we I didn't even know what we would see I thought it was necessary to do but that person-to-person -person communication where two or three are gathered together he's there too we prayed for them every single day um, I think it's what the Lord wants for us to actually talk to each other not just m mail it in or phone it in yeah. you know we're getting more and more impersonal with all the social mm -hmm. media and that personal contact is important to people I totally agree so yeah. when these people go door to door have you got any kind of stats as to what what kind of uh, 
Can you see that they're making a difference, that they've changed the minds of people? Yes, two elections in a row, we've had um, an average of 6.7% movement of those voters uh, voting for the pro-life candidate. Praise God. So praise God is and right. And 6.7%, I'm sure, makes a difference it, in many of these does. races. It does. And the good news is that the senators who are elected and the President of the United States who was elected knows that. They know that doing the right thing, standing for life, is also the politically smart thing to do because it moves voters in the right direction for their for their candidacy. So we're recording these programs prior to the midterm elections in November of 2018, but they're being aired the week of the Roe versus Wade, <laughs> yeah. January. So we don't know the outcome, but I'm believing yeah. that we are going to have a landslide for the conservatives in 2018. And if so, your people are out there. You got what, a thousand people? We out have Monday? almost a thousand people going door to door. And I love your boldness because this we're going to know the answer when this is aired. So I think you're right. Let's be on record. Amen. <laughs> well, anybody can stand be. up after the fact and say, oh, this is what I was believing. <laughs> we're doing for. it beforehand. That's right. And, <laughs> That's right. And it works. Yeah. And so all of these people that you've got going door to door, yeah. you pay them. We pay them. It is uh, it is not a small operation. It's enormous. Why do you pay them instead of just get volunteers? Well, we uh, we call them. It's kind of we make a joke of it. We're, they're paid volunteers. They're people that would have would have volunteered and often do. But we really need the predictability of showing up on time, making sure that they do the they visit a number of doors that make sense for because we got to cover a lot of territories. It really is the predictability. Yeah. Um, God, I wish you could know some of them. I mean, they are just the most on fire, young people, smart as whips and kind, the kind of people that really help change my mind on this whole issue. Well, you know, we used to have volunteers in our phone center. We will have anywhere from 45 to maybe 50 or 60 people answering the phones at one time. And we used to use volunteers, and even though they meant good, mm -hmm. if, you know, something came up, if the weather was bad or whatever, they just That's wouldn't it. show. But when you have an and employee, you, mm -hmm. you can control it. Yeah, and you, and you can't really complain when a volunteer has something else that they're doing. That's right. So um, we can complain if somebody doesn't show up <laughs> and they don't really do the job anymore. So uh, we will put on the, on the screen right here your website and stuff like that. These are paid volunteers, and you get all of your support through contributions. We do. We do. We got... We definitely don't get anything from the government. It's all individuals who support our pro-life work. Sorry, I just really appreciate what you're doing. That's awesome. And uh, you didn't start out pro-life. Tell us not. how you got into this. Well, you know, it is um, it is the week of Roe versus Wade, um, the anniversary, and it makes me think of Norma McCorvey. Um, Norma McCorvey and I both were adamantly, we called it pro-choice. Um, now, is Norma McCorvey, is this someone I should know? I'm so sorry. I'm Norma sorry. McCorvey was the Jane Roe in Roe versus Wade. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and I mean, um, no, most people don't know that. And um, uh, so I'll tell you my story, but her story is beautiful. Um, she she allowed herself to be used by the lawyers at that time. Um, they overturned Roe versus Wade based on her saying that she mm -hmm. was raped mm -hmm. um, and needed to have an abortion. That turned out uh, to not be true. She recanted later. She bore the burden of decades of abortions on her conscience, and she finally converted to the pro-life position and became a, very, a sincere and adamant Christian and also just had a heartache her whole life you know, mentally, physically, spiritually, struggled her whole life. She died not long ago. Did you know her? I did know her. Mm -hmm. um, she had a hard time doing anything in public. It was very difficult. It was a hard life. Imagine that burden that she yeah. carried for all those children. Well, as of the time that we're making these programs, there's over 60 million right. children in the U.S. that have been aborted. And that's not including California and New York, that's which right. aren't required to report all of mm. the abortions. So we know it's more that's than that. That's right. We're trying to change that, by the way. The reporting matters. I mean, each one of those children ought to be accounted for, um, certainly by the Lord, but certainly we ought to know what the damage is. So you're is. dealing with that issue, too. We are dealing with uh, working on that on the federal level. You asked me about me, though. <clears throat> I didn't mean to avoid it. No, I just was good. thinking I about Norma. I appreciate you that um, Because I always think of her around this time. She's very much on my heart. Um, so but, she became a believer. Yeah. Um, but for me, I was adamantly, I called it pro-choice. I, I, I really, truly thought, um, this is only my decision. Why in the world would anybody have anything to do with it?
I clearly didn't think there was another human being. Now, you were also a Republican and a leader of the Republican on your, what, college campus? Yeah, I was at Duke University. I was the co-chair of college Republicans. The way they handled the debate then in that club was they had a pro-choice chair and a pro-life chair. So I was the pro-choice chair. And um, You know, today, <laughs> most people don't associate being pro-choice with being a Republican. Thank God. But... That is, and that is a, that has been the result of a definite strategy to defeat pro choice Republicans um, mm-hmm. over time, you really can't find a candidate who's, and who's Republican. And also, there used Republican. to be pro-life uh, Democrats. That's right. And now, I think you said there was only one? There's only really one in terms of an elected official. You could you could count a couple of other, maybe the governor of Louisiana, um, who, who I believe has made some very good, strong pro-life decisions. But the one that's in Congress now, Dan Lipinski from Illinois, he was the one pro-life Democrat that did not cave when it came to Obamacare, and when it came down to the abortion um, funding in Obamacare, Obama put up an executive order, Mm -hmm. said, hey, don't worry about that abortion thing. All of the um, pro-life Democrats at that time caved um, that were in a certain target area, and uh, but not Dan Lipinski. He said, nothing has changed. I'm the man that I was. I'm not going to be any different man. He's truly a hero. But, but you know, I, this says a lot about our society that 25 years ago, yeah, it does. there were pro-choice Republicans mm-hmm. and there were pro-life Democrats, and now it has just nearly switched. I know. And you know, I often am defending the, what the Republicans or the conservatives are doing, but I am not a Republican. I'm a Christian. And it yeah. just so happens that the Republicans have aligned with godly values and the Democrats have aligned with ungodly values. Mm-hmm. And I know that this will incense a lot of people, but I just really don't understand how a committed Christian mm-hmm. can sit there and embrace everything that the Bible is against. I thought I was a strong Christian, and I just would not look at it. That's the honest truth. There's a cognitive dissonance. There's a, it is what I say it is, and not and and no ability to think any further until people, like you and <clears throat> and just good, merciful, smart people, just kind of broke me down, you know. Until I, I the thing you said about the Republicans and Democrats, is really important because I think that when we win because I think we're winning now, Mm -hmm. Um, what's going to happen is that a lot of the Democrats are going to start to, it's not going to stay polarized as it is right now. I really do think that we see this in our door-to-door work. We we go to Democrat homes that are pro-life all the time. The Democratic Party is very conscious that they are leaving out um, a, a huge part of their base. They just well, don't has, talk about it. It has been radicalized That's right. in just the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it has become radical, and you don't have to look much further than the Kavanaugh hearings that That's we right. had recently to see the tactics that they are using. I mean, it is crazy. It is. And you know, there's a verse that uh, came out during the Kavanaugh hearings that I've been thinking about, and it's uh, Proverbs 28, 4, I believe, that says, that when you forsake the law, you praise the wicked. And the Democrats just forsook the rule of law that Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15 says, you would never receive an accusation against a person for anything on just one witness. It has to be in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And then in verses 16 through 21, it says, that if you find a false witness that has accused somebody of something, what they thought to do that other person should be done to them. And see, that's what our judicial system was based on, biblical Mm -hmm. values. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats just threw this out. They forsook the law. And by doing so, so, they are praising the wicked. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of Democrats are seeing this and saying that this is not who we are. That's right. And I I believe we are going to see a migration of the people who aren't the Mm -hmm. extreme radicals coming at least to the center, if not over to the conservative values. Everything you just described is is is, is written on their hearts, even if they don't know the scripture. That's right. They know it. They respond in the way that you just said in terms of fairness. So there's an overwhelming response, and I re- and even Nancy Pelosi and some Democratic leaders see that. Um, in fact, she said recently that abortion shouldn't be a litmus test for Democrats. Well, that's the first time anything like that has come out of her mouth. So I really do think that pull of the heart 
is um, and and, the, and looking at reality and how extreme things have gotten in the Democratic Party on this is going to uh, cause a shift. There's a wedge there, and I think that you know, I, I like you. I don't care if they're Republicans or Democrats. They better be pro-life, though. Um, and it shouldn't necessarily be exclusive to one party. It's a the, human thing. But when the Democrats in the 2016 election cycle actually took the word God out yes. of their platform and only put it back in under protest, mm -hmm. but I mean, they forsook God. They didn't even want a mention of God. That just, how in the world do you support something that has basically just tried to scrub God from our government? Well, I think what happens is they, the people find out. They hope that people aren't going to find out. They want the little elite group of leaders to only know, and they all feel really good. But when it gets down to real people in real America who are the real votes that actually elect people, they don't like it. And it's mm -hmm. still that way, thanks to your ministry and, um, and to their own hearts. They don't want that. You know, when we moved into our building here, we had a woman come up to me at graduation, and she was an Amer African-American lady, and she said, she says, when I first came here, I cringed every time you talked about abortion or every time you talked about taxes or immigration <laughs> or any of these conservative issues. And she says, I just hated it. And I would pray, oh, God, get him back on the Word. And I, I said, well, that is the Word. And she said, well, I know it now. But she says, now I am so conservative that she's been blackballed by her own family. Oh. And so yeah. I got this lady and I pulled her to the side and I said, look, I'm not going to criticize you. I'm not going to argue. I just, please explain to me how you could say that you love God and you could be for everything that the Bible is against and you're against everything that the Bible is for. I said, explain this to me. And, she, and this was really uh, revealing to me. She says, I loved God, but I didn't love the Word of God mm -hmm. until I came to Bible school. She says, you cannot love the Word of God and honor the Word of God and be a liberal. <laughs> and now that really spoke to me. Yeah, Let me go back to something you said just a minute ago. You said in their heart, uh, Pelosi and all of these others, they know. Uh, let me share a scripture with you here in Romans chapter 1. This is after Paul had said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God. And immediately all of the religious people of his day, you know, they were just used to condemning people and telling people how much of a sinner you are. And so in verses 18 through 20, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed. And if you look this up in the Greek, it means it's already revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of man who hold the truth and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And there's many things that these verses say, but one of the things that's clear is that in their heart, people know that's right. right from wrong. That's right. And I helped start a couple of pregnancy centers, and we've done a lot of things, and we have counseled a lot of women who had abortions, yeah. and they knew it was wrong. Oh, yeah. And that, they that were plagued invisible, by it. That invisible thing clearly seen just strikes to the heart. I mean, my heart. and. Um, a lot of times people ask me because because I changed my or God changed my mind and I cooperated. But um, on this issue, how do you how do you advise people talk about this? I think you go in with complete confidence that what is that what is invisible will be clearly seen eventually by the person, even if it's not in that conversation. But those seeds planted over time. But when I argued with uh, the nastiness that um, that I would not like to admit to with other people about this issue, they would walk away and think they made no difference whatsoever, that I was just a hard case, impossible to, to convince. But every single time there was a seed planted that grew, it resonated with my heart without question. And eventually that cognitive dissonance, that that closed door starts to open. And that's when the Holy Spirit is allowed in. And I actually think that when we get this thing right for our nation, that that open door will also lead to many conversions, people coming to Christ Amen. because of the light of the Holy Spirit that comes in at that time. So you bear witness that in your heart, you knew. Yeah. That's, that's I didn't something. know I knew, but you're right. But I you knew. had you had questions. You had yeah. um, the Lord was was trying yeah. to speak to you. You know, one of the things that I see in third world countries, I travel overseas a lot and minister to people, is that you go into these underdeveloped countries where they haven't been so educated.
I actually have a phrase that I love lately. I've, I've heard people say, you have to be an intellectual to be dumb enough to believe that. <laughs> And really, you have to, mm -hmm. people have gotten away from following their heart and what they know to be true. That's right. And they are getting into these mind games and yeah. saying, this is just a hunk of flesh. It's mm -hmm. my body. I have a choice over my, all of those things are mind games. On a heart level, women know mm -hmm. that this is a life yeah. that they have on the inside of them. And so when I was in Vietnam, I had a lot of atheists come and counter me. Mm -hmm. And I just talked to them. Just, I said, you're lying to me. I know that in your heart, you know, there's a God. And they said, no, there is no God. But I, I was basing it on these scriptures. That's and did right. you know, time after time after time, I had those people come back to me mm. and say, you know what? I know that there's a God. And they asked me to pray for them and stuff. And yeah. it's the same thing mm. with this issue. In yes. a heart level, mm. these people, you know, what they did with Kavanaugh, these people know that that's not right. Yeah. And uh, was it, who was it? Was it Pelosi that delayed the thing for six months after she got the, or who am I? Thinking? Oh, of Feinstein. Feinstein. And, uh, yeah. Feinstein. Same, same kind. Yeah. Took that, <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. took that report and waited six weeks. Sat on it. And so even if you, some people believe that they were really sincerely concerned about women, this was nothing but a political move. And the fact that they sat on it for six weeks and waited, trying to delay it past the midterms, proves it in their heart. They know what right is. I think so, too. I know that's true. Um, and I also know a couple of things. One is that when we we might not get thanks here, probably we won't. <laughs> um, there'll be a few people that come back and say, you know, you're right. Bless you for telling me that on the whole, maybe not a ton. But I know that in heaven yeah. um, it will be an unbelievable banquet. And also all those children that never made it that we're advocating for. We're advocating for their brothers and sisters. They're going to be there to greet us with special, special joy. I really believe that's true. And that's the positive side of it. And I try and be positive. But on the other side, <laughs> yes. we're going to stand before the Lord Amen. and the Lord's that's going right. to say, so what did you that's Christians right. do oh, about yeah. 60 million of my people that were murdered? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not only 60 million. We talk about some of it not being reported, but uh, when America legalized abortion, the world as a whole did not. Uh, That's right. Have that. And when, once we legalized it, it's been like dominoes and it you see been. it spread over the world. So we are obligated to get it right for ourselves, for our children, for our neighborhoods, for our families, for our country and for the rest of the world. As you described, we are one of seven nations only that has as liberal laws as we do up until up until the end. You can have an abortion. We've got Vietnam, North Korea and China in that group. That's the human rights crowd that we're wow. a part of. Lindsey Graham is always talking about that. He's mm -hmm. our, the author of our 20 week pain capable bill. He's like, we got to get out of that club. Amen. We got to get out of that club. We should not be there. And, you know, this is subtle ways that it comes at us because I travel on uh, planes a lot. And when you go into these foreign countries, they'll say, please give this money to help the children. And they name these organizations yeah. and they'll show kids that the stewardesses are helping. What they don't tell you is that a large portion of this change that you give mm -hmm. goes to abortion. Yeah. And it's some of the largest funding abortion worldwide, mm -hmm. these things. And Christians are giving towards this because they never just come out and present what they're really doing. Well, there, we will be held accountable. I agree with you. I mean, everyone who even has a hint of, hell, of the horror, you got to do something. You know, one of the things that I believe that's good, Marjorie, is that through this Kavanaugh confirmation process, and not only that, but just since Trump was elected, yeah. it's like the Democrats, and again, I know some people are going to think I'm just promoting Republican. I'm promoting Christianity, yes. godly things. But the Democrats used to disguise themselves mm -hmm. and come out like they're really good and store. They have exposed themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like they've taken off their clothes. You are seeing who mm -hmm. they really are. And <clears throat> I don't think that they have changed. I mm -hmm. think that they have just been disrobed because mm -hmm. they have been uh, passing laws from the bench and changing America against the majority of Americans' wishes for decades through oh, the yeah. Supreme Court. And man, when they saw Trump come promising that he was going to put conservatives on, and then when Kavanaugh came up and Gorsuch mm -hmm. and stuff, they see their power base eroding. They know what's happening. I and mean, they have been stripped. We now see what they're really like. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor 
not the government. Before he found me in my mother's womb, he knew me. Before I was born, he sanctified me. We held these truths to be self-evident. That all men are the created people. They are Adam! By their creator with certain unalienable rights. That monkeys are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Remember, it's my choice. It's God's choice. It's a baby choice. It's our choice. Not yours. Choose life. Choose life. Choose life! So cute, he's so tiny. I hope that you've enjoyed these programs with Marjorie. I tell you, it was powerful. And we are offering you some resources. On this little USB right here, we have uh, three interviews with two of the women are abortion survivors. One was a saline abortion that caused disfigurement and physical problems. The other one uh, is a woman that survived an abortion. And then we also have an interview of a woman whose daughter died during an abortion. This is gonna be a great resource for you. And then we have this as our free gift to you that has scriptures in there that we used against abortion and also a lot of statistics. So all of this will be a blessing to you. I encourage you to get these products and to share the good news about how we are coming to an end of Roe versus Wade in the United States. Today you viewed a portion of Andrew's interview with Marjorie Dan and Felser. The interview in its entirety is available on a special Choose Life USB flash drive. Also included on this flash drive, you'll find several more interviews and testimonies relating to abortion. This Choose Life USB flash drive will be accompanied by the Observing All Things booklet that contains many statistics and scriptures with regard to abortion and other social issues. You can get these valuable resources today for a gift of just $20 or more. Also, Andrew would like to offer you the Observing All Things booklet absolutely free. Go to awmi.net to receive this free offer today. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. For over 25 years, Andrew Womack has been involved with and supported our Colorado Springs Pregnancy Center and has seen the lives of many thousands of babies spared. Presently an outreach of Life Network, the Pregnancy Center offers several valuable services, ranging from free pregnancy tests to personal counseling, classes covering pregnancy to infant care, and supplies spanning from maternity wear to diapers and baby clothing. They also offer post-abortion counseling, which ministers to women who have already experienced the heartache of abortion. Andrew has since retired from the Board of Directors, but continues to support the Colorado Springs Pregnancy Centers. If you'd like more information, please visit elifenetwork.com or cspregnancycenter.com. Thanks to the support of our friends and partners, Karis Bible College is able to reach more people with the gospel than ever before through the continued expansion of our Phase II building project. For the latest information on the Phase II construction update, go to awmi.net. I'd like to invite you to come to our campus days. We'll have all of our instructors ministering. We will have fellowship time together. There'll be questions and answers. And it's an opportunity for you to just come check out not only the spiritual things, but the facilities here. We have one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. If you can't relate to God and find God through the surroundings, then the word that we share will definitely bring you to another level. It'll be an awesome time right here in Woodland Park.